All of our modern technology is driven by electronics. These electronic devices are made of millions of tiny switches that can compute and store information. So our ability to push the frontiers of computing hinges on identifying the ultimate operating limits of these tiny switches in terms of speed and energy consumption. To understand these limits, we have created a new kind of camera that can visualize the ultra-fast atomic motions occurring inside these tiny switches while they are being operated. This is a result of three key developments by our team. The first is our ability to custom make state-of-the-art electronic devices which can be operated millions of times. The second is the ultra-fast electron diffraction source at Slack, which produces really short pulses of electrons which can fly through materials and take photographs of their atomic structures. And the third ingredient is a synchronization scheme that brings these components together. So we cycle the switches on and off several times, each time taking a snapshot of the atomic structure at a different point in the device's cycle. And we end up with an ultra-fast stroboscopic movie of the atoms moving inside the electronic device on timescales of a few billionths of a second. So we use our new camera to look at a fascinating class of materials which have interesting applications for brain-like computing. Now these materials are known to exist normally in two forms, and one conducts electrical current whereas the other one does not. And under natural conditions, both forms have a slightly different arrangement of atoms, uh, which means it takes energy to go from one state to the other. Now we find that when these materials are electrically shocked, um, they can go from being insulating to conducting, but without any of the atoms actually having to move. Um, so this is a new form of this material that does not exist naturally, uh, and is created inside the switches in our experiments. And remarkably, this novel state, which exists only for a few millionths of a second, is stabilized by imperfections which invariably exist inside the material. So our challenge now is to think of ways to intentionally engineer disorder in materials so that these new kinds of states are made more stable. This will allow us to make devices in which electronic switching can occur without any atomic motion. And if we don't need to move atoms, then we can make devices which can operate much faster while consuming dramatically less energy. I think the broader implication of our work is that we now have a new way of synthesizing materials that do not exist under natural conditions. Our approach allows us to observe these states on fast timescales and also potentially tune their properties. In the future, we are also really excited to use our approach to create new kinds of electronic devices and circuits which can meet our rapidly growing needs for real-time and data-intensive computing.